Boys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be doing an updated PvP guide for the Cycle Frontier. I'm going to show you the top three kits I like to rock. One being a very low cost, the other one being a medium cost, and the last one being a very high cost cost and we'll go over some clips and i'll explain to you how i fought them and how i won my gunfights if you're not subscribed make sure to hit that button and make sure to follow me on twitch i stream almost every day and without further ado let's hop right into it so first things first i'm going to show you the top three kits that i like to use and we're going to start off with the cheapest kit that i like to rock now this is kind of a meme kit for me if i want to play on say theris or something and just kind of walk around mess around this is the kit that i'm going to be rocking obviously i'll have some green stims with me i usually will rock greens if i'm rocking white armor white stims are just horrendous all around so i would never recommend them right here we're gonna be rocking just a white bag with white armor and we have a pdw as many attachments as we can put on again recoil attachments are actually extremely important and they're fairly cheap so i would rock a pdw for the close range with a red dot and i rock an ar-55 with a two times scope because i can have some distance on the enemy again i can maybe give him the half hp and i can full rush him with the pdw and this class is a really good cheap loadout that you can do simple jungle runs with that you can do really simple things with now for the second class this is the more medium class this is the one i like to rock in solos to be honest this is probably one of my most favorite loadouts and this is because i love the advocate very very much and because it's very very versatile with this class i'm rocking a red dot on the advocate but you can also rock a two times on the advocate when i usually rock this loadout i bring either a two times or a red dot whatever is the opposite of what i have on my gun and i stick that in my safe pocket so if i'm in a close range encounter i can put the red dot side on or if someone's playing me from a little bit more distance I can put on the two times scope and kind of work off of that. I have some very decent attachments on the gun, especially for recoil control. I don't have a penetration mod on the gun, but that's all right because the advocate is already very good and I can control the recoil on this weapon very, very well, especially with these attachments. And now this is going to be the high MMR class that I like to rock in duos, trios, stuff like that. There's like three weapons that everyone uses in these high MMR lobbies, and that includes the Basilisk, the Core, and the Brute. Basically, the Core is being used by everyone and their mother but i'm just sick of it and i honestly i've been loving the brute but especially with the two times scope recoil is super super easy to control and the gun rips and it's also a lot of fun because i can rinse someone from decently far away and if they come close i can probably win that gunfight against the core but for this loadout i obviously have some really good attachments on the brute i don't like having a suppressor i like to focus on the recoil control that's why i have fully decked out green recoil attachments with a purple extended mag which gives it 38 bullets and i also have a purple penetration mod so this gun absolutely absolutely shreds anything in its path it's genuinely gross my armor is also extremely stacked i'm not rocking exotic because my purples have really good perks as you see my purple shield has 30 percent faster stim and medicate use and it gives me an additional seven health for every stim i use and then the helmet is kind of just unfair it gives me 15 extra health it doesn't have two perks on it but that's completely fine by me because again 15 extra health is extremely extremely useful on its own but those are the three kits i like to rock now we'll go over some pvp situations and kind of explain to you what i did and why i did it so this first clip is going to be a 1v2 situation and i'm going to show you where the other team messed up really really bad and basically what won me this gunfight but basically i'm stuck on theris island right i'm stuck in a really 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 i'm stuck in a back area as you saw behind me there's really nowhere i can go as we see here we see the first guy over here in front of me he's gonna have an advocate so he's gonna have that angle on me and his teammate was trying to hit a flank on me around the side so he was gonna come from my back right so right here i'm getting lasered not laser but i'm getting hit by an advocate so i know or can't really give too much space there and i heard his teammate coming this way so right here i kind of just peeked the angle i have a rock to my left as you saw where i was there's a rock to my left giving me some cover but again this right here was bad timing because as we can see here his teammates right in the corner of my screen right here as you can see he's right there and i know the second guy is pushing up behind me so right here what i do is i try to play off this rock right here because that's the only thing i have and i saw the pillar to my left so i know that's going to protect me so right here, I just focus on getting this kill really quickly. And right here is where the guy messed up, right? I kill one of his teammates, right? I kill his only teammate. Now I'm down to below half HP, right? I only have about 45 HP, maybe 40 HP left. And his teammate does a really dumb play here is that he gives me time to heal. And right there, he's still at the end of the hole, as you can see. He's giving me plenty of time to heal. He's still not pushed up yet. If he pushed up on me right now, if he just full sprinted up to me, he'd get to me in time where I would be fully healed and his push would really be no different to what his teammate did to me. So if you're in these other guy's shoes, you have to push off of the first guy's damage because if he pushed off of that first teammate's damage, I was probably dead. But right here in the gunfight, I see his teammate had a hammer and I love the hammer. So I go, I snag that real quick and I know I can get kind of some peak shots on this guy. He's still at the end of the hallway. So I just try to kind of tickle him with 
with some shots, try to hit a couple shots. So this guy was hitting me a little bit and I was just trying to heal up to make sure I was fully ready for a fight. And he pushed up to that rock right in front of me. So I knew I had to get a tag just to kind of give him some damage, make him push off of me a little bit. And as you saw, he pushed all the way back. This guy sprinted. As you see, he's all the way back there now. He ran very, very far, but this is exactly what I wanted because this put some separation between me and him and let me work with my hammer. So right here, I decided to kind of push up. I saw this guy running far away. I double tap him with the hammer right there. And I knew if I push up, he'll obviously have time and probably take two blue stims and he'll more than likely be at full HP. So I knew it would be a tough gunfight no matter what. I just had to get some type of damage here. And I had one grenade. I saw him behind the box. I throw the grenade behind the box to kind of push him off of that area. And then he starts sprinting to the right. So I just kind of try to guess where he's going. I get the flechette, get some really good shots on him. And then I got to push him again. And he's going to have time once again to basically fully heal in this gunfight. He made me push into him, which was a smart thing. But luckily, I'm just really good with the hammer. Sometimes I miss, sometimes I hit. I hurt him around the corner. I missed my first shot. I knew I had to just keep peeking him. I headshot him right there, which was crucial. If I don't hit him in the head right away, I probably lose this gunfight because I probably did 60 damage from right away. Like right here, if I hit him right here, that would have been a really good shot. Right here, I headshot him, which was really important. Then he decides to kind of just full swing me and I get that lucky second headshot and I managed to take him down. So if you're in these guys' shoes, please make sure to push off of that first guy's damage. That would have easily got them to win in this gunfight, but they just didn't play together. They didn't play properly at all. So right here for the second clip, I want to give you guys a little bit of context here. So basically what was going on is that before recently in this game, we killed this guy's two teammates who had blue armor and this guy was stacked with a core full exotic armor with literally some of the best perks in the game. He had 15 additional health and if he took a stim he would get absolutely juiced he could heal in literally a second so it was a tough gunfight right here right here i'm smoking out my teammate because he had good loot and i told him get out before you can i'll 1v1 this guy i'll try my best to kill him my teammate was stacked with like two full perp kits he was gone so i told him get out i'll save us i'll get this guy i'll kill him just for some reference and now we'll go over to the twitch clip so you can actually hear the audio because i want you to hear why you also shouldn't be cocky in this game I would need to be. Not making it out of here. So as you could hear from that clip, I was pretty excited I killed this guy, but that's just because, you know, I killed him. Sometimes I can hit my shots. Sometimes I'm decent at the game. But right here in the beginning, this guy says, don't peek me, don't peek me. And honestly, he was right. I shouldn't have peeked him right there because he had a core and he could rinse me if I peeked for more than two seconds. So right there, I probably should have played more spatial there to kind of be a little bit more aware of my surroundings. But right here, I get a decent head peek on this guy because I knew he's probably going to rush me. He's going to get arrogant. He's going to push out once or twice because I knew he sounded like an arrogant player. So I knew if I just held, if I just held and waited and waited, he would push me eventually. And right here, that's exactly what he did. He pushed out. I got some decent shots on him. Didn't hit him too much because honestly, I couldn't see crap there. I didn't even know what I was doing. But right here, I got some good shots on him. I managed to push up. I just start rinsing him in the back and I knew he had something because he healed extremely quickly. Like right there, he took a stim right there. I hit him a lot. He pushed out on me. I knew I had to push in front of him. He comes in, he goes out and then I rinse him at the end. But basically the goal of this fight was to get some really good damage on him just to get him to kind of push back and heal so I could have that advantage because at the point in time when he was holding the angles, I couldn't peek that because I had a brute and I had to get up close and personal to really make this fight more in my favor. So again, I got that decent damage, probably hit him for 30 and then I just push up on him. He's probably down to 40 health right here i push him again he's got to be low he probably takes a stim right there he peeks me again and then i just got to push up and just hit him as much as i can but that's that gunfight and honestly i played that very very well for someone that had an extra 15 hp he had full exotic armor and he had the perks to take stims and it healed him at rapid rates for an extra seven health as well now right here is going to be a 2v3 gunfight right here we had a team pushing up on us full perps full exodes using cores using brutes using bass he's using all of it and i was playing with cali and cali played this really really well he did a lot of the work here but i 
just want to show you how we play to kind of push off of each other in a 2v3 situation. So right here, what happened beforehand is we had a team of three, right? There's three guys over here and one guy decided to push out. We got a different angle. So we went over here through this hole in the fence and went behind the fence. And we knew that there was two guys over here and one guy who decided to go all on his lonesome. So the only way we kind of make this gunfight fair is if we push this guy on the left and we have to kill him immediately. So we have a 2v2 situation. So immediately we say full rush, screw the guys on the right, let them shoot us as much as possible. I don't care what they hit us for. We have to push the guy on the left and we have to get that kill almost immediately or we're going to be screwed. So right here was the time for action. We decide, you know what, screw it or push it through the fence. And you're going to see that Cali gets some insane damage off of the rip. And I managed to hit him with like three shots, two shots to kill him off. And right here, I decide to back up, get to full HP just so we're both full HP and we're ready for this gunfight. Another guy pushes Cali right here. So I decide to help him out, get the final shots on the guy. But Cali absolutely rinsed that guy against Cali. He's a very good player. And he played this very, very well. But this last guy was all by his lonesome. He got the height on us. So I tried to get some shots through the cracks. I didn't get him right here. I thought Callie was dead right here. I'll be honest. I thought my teammate was. I see my teammate right here, right? So in my head, I'm like, okay, it's a 2v1 situation. But then if we go forward just a little bit more, I look away for two seconds, right? I look away. I look away. I look back at my teammate and he's completely gone. And I see loot exactly where he was standing. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm screwed. I'm in a 1v1 situation now against a very good player. And then I peek up again. And I peeked down again, and then he's magically back. So that scared the crap out of me. But again, there was communication there. I knew he wasn't dead. But for a split second, I was very, very nervous. But right here, Callie said he got some pretty good shots on the guy. The guy pushed me, hit me decently weak. And right here, I'm taking a stim. But Callie said he got some good shots. So again, I push up. He's reloading. He had no chance really at all. And right here, we won that gunfight because we pushed off of the damage that each of us made. Right here in this gunfight, Callie made almost all of the opening damage to every single gunfight. And I went and just finished off the guys. But that's how you should play in a 2v3 scenario. Get damage, push off of your teammates' damage, and try to get those kills extremely fast so you can make the gunfight more in your favor. That was a 2v3 win. Now I'm going to show you a 1v3 loss that I got. I played this pretty badly here. I played it well for a decent amount of time, but right here I was screwed. My two teammates were dead, and there was a team of three coming down. I was underneath ECP with his East Collection point, and they were pushing me. They went down the steps, they were going down the hole, and they were going to push me right down this corridor here. And I knew that if I stayed here, I didn't make much noise. I could probably to get a really good jump on them especially if they didn't know i was here since i had the core i knew that i could probably kill one maybe two in the process of them peeking me but let's see what i did here so right here in the beginning i'm just listening trying to see when they're going to come after me and i start to hear them pushing down on me i try to peek and then i just try to rinse as many kids as possible as soon as they push up so as soon as they peek i walk out i spray one i get a kill quickly i'm decently full in my hp bar i only got hit like once by a brute maybe twice so again i have like over 90 percent hp like 93 HP left. So I was hiding behind this pillar right here, trying to get some more cover. And right here, I played this really badly. I over way too much. As you see, I'm I'm not near this pillar anymore, all right? This pillar is all the way on my right. And I have literally no cover to my name. And these guys have a lot to play with. There's a box in the back that they can play with. They have this pillar right here and this box, which makes a very big triangle for cover that they can use as cover. And I really have no cover right now, which I played it horrifically. But as we go through it, you see this guy is literally right here. Again, as I said, he's using this box as cover. I would only be able to shoot him on this side of his body. And if I did hit him, he could dip behind and take cover right here. Then his teammate could re-peek for him. And he would shred me. So either way, I was pretty much screwed here. But I played this really, really badly because right here, again, I'm far away from the pillar. I have almost no cover. I literally have no cover besides the little railing that's underneath me which comes on this side as well but right here i just get absolutely rinsed he just absolutely guns me down i hit him for a decent amount and then i'm literally one hp as you can see here i have literally maybe 15 20 hp left and i try to get a heal off i try to hit him with a shatter and that i do he pushes up on me i hit him once with a full shatter and then i go left to try to hit him because again he's looking to the direction that i was shooting at so we think i'd repeat that so i peek him on the other side i hit him once and then he just rinses me because again i was so so low but right there what i should have done is honestly in this gun fight back here i played this really badly because again i have one killed and i had it back up there to just reload because i was at nine bullets now i'm at 34 so right here i should have been peeking this upper angle if i peek right here i probably get the first shot on him because i can see his head or i think he can see me because honestly i should have been able to rinse his head with at least three 
bullets. Then I could have pushed off with the shatter and just done better there. But as you see here, you see his teammate also for a slight second. You can see there's one guy up here and there's a little head right down there. So I knew where both of them were, but I didn't really take that into account. So again, I should have shot his head a lot more right there and I shouldn't have got pushed off of. I think his teammate pushed up on me. Honestly, that's why he was so much HP. But right there, I should have played it carefully. Should have tried to kill another and then pushed up on my shatter. So right there, play your time. Take the cover that you have and use it to your advantage. So hopefully this video helped you guys understand kind of how I PvP and how hopefully you can take some tips that I use and put them into your game. So hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you in the Twitch streams and in the YouTube comments and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, this.